Welcome to The Quantum Healer. My name is Reverend Dr. Tracy Allshafer, and I'm here to talk with Terry Rogers, who is a neuromuscular therapy professional and a coach of functional medicine. Functional medicine. Mm -hmm. So we can talk a little bit about what that's about, too, and how you okay. kind of moved into that. Okay. Um, but for those of you who aren't um, familiar with neuromuscular therapy, it is a particular technique that massage therapists use. Mm -hmm. And um, as you can already probably ascertain from the word, it, it's a pretty therapeutic, deep body work. Yeah, it doesn't have to be deep all the time, mm. but um, it's very effective at getting into spots that a lot of other people miss. Mm. It, getting into tendon attachments and ligaments and things yeah. like that then so sometimes it's deeper than others mm -hmm. but it's not excruciating right it's not like maybe rolfing or something like that where people say yeah. that sometimes rolfing is really painful mm -hmm. and it also depends on people's pain thresholds right and I always work within somebody's pain threshold mm -hmm. because if you create too much pain everybody goes like that Right. And what good is that? You're not getting anywhere. You're not getting anywhere. Yeah, if you tighten up. The body's up. protecting. Yeah. So. so that's a good little tip, actually, for anybody that gets a massage, regardless of the pre-conversation that you had with your therapist. If you're uncomfortable, you need to speak up. There should, have, there should be a dialogue about that. Absolutely. Especially if you work in areas where people are not used to working. Mm -hmm. yes. I remember, so Terry was actually one of the instructors in the massage school that I went to however long ago it that was. It was a long time <laughs> <laughs> And I, uh, some of the things you taught us really, really stuck out with me. And, um, and I, I can't say that I remember the whole module because there was so much deep. You're learning so much, right? right and you're right. trying to absorb. And um, the detail uh, of things, there was just a lot for me. But there were certain things that, hang, that just kind of... And I remember the first time we were working in the neck, mm -hmm. and it was it was like, wow. I know, because you go somewhere and go, oh, my neck is killing me, and everybody works on the back of your neck. But you have all these muscles in the front of your neck really attached to your temporomandibular joint and headache pain and stuff like that. Right. It's kind of like when somebody has back pain. I work on a muscle called the psoas, mm -hmm. which is a deep back muscle. You have to access it from the front, but there are trigger points, which we can explain later, mm -hmm. uh, that go right into your back. So I always start people, almost always, on their back, laying on their back, and I work in the front of the body first. And then by the time I get to the back, they go, oh, that's so weird. I, used, I thought that that's where everything hurt. Yeah. Because pain lies. It's never where you think it is. This is true. That psoas muscle over the years has been something that um, it's a big eye opener for people. Mm -hmm. When you, um, I taught yoga for a long time, and I would see a lot of times in their posture and um, what they're describing as being uncomfortable or painful that it was probably the psoas that was locked up. Mm -hmm. And then there are various different techniques of active release and different things that we would right. do. And people were always, I mean, even if you just get a little bit in there, right? right it's just, like, oh! <laughs> yeah, it can be kind of a little bit uncomfortable because also, who goes in there? You know, so yeah, it, yeah. And it's really interesting. And more now than ever with everybody with devices and computers and sitting all day, mm -hmm. uh, if you start to look at the population, everybody's going more and more and more like this. Yeah. And your psoas actually arises up here right underneath your sternum as you like shrink this way it's kind of going like that to your mm -hmm. back so it really pulls you forward mm -hmm. and it's a really important muscle because it lifts your legs it when you sit down you're using your psoas it twists you from side to side yep. it's pretty interesting muscle it is yeah so yeah. that was one of those little things that I learned in a class a long time ago and I went whoa mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah, and it's a, it, it's big when you educate people about some of those things because right. they really they just think oh something hurts but it's deep back here right 
and they don't even know how to explain it very well. Right. And then, um, you know, when you educate them about the muscle and start to show them, you know, where you can work and, and what you're doing, they're really blown away. Yeah, yeah. So it, it really makes a really big difference. So um, I do a lot of that. And lately, I've been doing a lot more fascial work mm. because the more research that gets done on fascia and how connected it is to everything, mm -hmm. um, you start even looking more and more about like the cross pattern and the rotation patterns and all so, that. So, Well, let's back up a little bit and talk about what is neuromuscular therapy. So um, first of all, is there a particular founder of the modality and, um, and then what is it? Explain it a bit. Okay, so Dr. Janet Travell really founded neuromuscular therapy, I think. Nobody's work is just only their own mm -hmm. in any science field. It's like, it doesn't matter. Somebody's always done it before or coordinated with somebody else. But David Simmons and Dr. Travell, but they used to give trigger point injections. They were oh, physicians. Okay. And then Paul St. John, who I learned from, was injured in a lot of different ways and was in Vietnam and he was in a helicopter crash and he had all these horrible headaches and pains and so at least that's what his story is mm -hmm. and he kind of studied all kinds of things to try to help himself okay and so he found um and dr travell's work i think was based on ida rolf's work oh okay you know so it's like this whole thing that's just kind of graduated yeah. through the years but the basis of neuromuscular therapy is instead of injecting a site a trigger point so there are tender points and trigger points so okay. a tender point would be like if you just had a spot here and it was sore okay and you held it for like 12 seconds or something like that and it totally dissipates but if you have a trigger point and you hear and it goes all the way up to your shoulder or your neck that's a trigger point so that's already an area that is so annoyed that it refers pain to another area okay and then by knowing these points and they've been documented not all of them but a lot of them have been documented on all kinds of charts and things like mm -hmm. that uh, you can release a lot of problems that people have especially people that have um, like fibromyalgia has some significant trigger points that they've documented with mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and um, so you know that's why I say pain always lies wherever mm -hmm. you feel the pain is not necessarily where it's coming from right so you have to look uh, it's also based on posture mm -hmm. and how you're holding your body and whether you have a limb length discrepancy yeah. or not because if you have a limb length discrepancy and you're not willing to fix it um, you'll feel good for a little while get a lot of work done and then you walk out and you're walking around with even a little bit, if it's really annoying you, mm -hmm. then, you know, you're going to be back to square one. Yeah. So it, um, so we really try to look at how people are holding their bodies. And like I said, these days, it's especially like, because as people are moving over this kind of posture from using all your devices, your head goes forward mm -hmm. and for every... <clears throat> I think inch your head is forward, your head weighs an extra 10 pounds wow. from the principle of fix, fi, physics. So no wonder your shoulders and your neck hurt because it's hanging off <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to do yoga or stretch or get up from your device and walk around, they say, every half an hour, mm -hmm. which is hard to do in an office situation. But just start moving and start stretching out your upper body, like yeah. open up your heart, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, if you're compressed, you're compressing your lungs, you're compressing your pancreas, you're compressing your liver. And what's that going to do over time? Mm -hmm. So we're not just looking at just, most doctors would probably think I'm crazy, but you're not just looking <laughs> at just your muscular and fascial system. You're looking at your organs, which are actually smooth muscles. Right. So it's really important to like notice that, oh, this is starting to hurt. I need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And if you wait a really long time, the longer you wait, the longer it takes to get better. Absolutely. You know. 
I was so. mentioning to you yesterday, I did a massage for a gentleman who, you know, like a, a lot of people, works on the computer all day long, mm -hmm. drives an hour to and from work. So there's that, con you know, this constant thing, and he has some issues in his mid-thoracic, mm -hmm. uh, mostly in his mid-thoracic, he, he's feeling them, but there's, he has so much of, you know, this, this, right, this going right. on. And I was explaining to him, look, you're in your car for two hours a day. Mm -hmm. Maybe think about, you know, having a lumbar support, bringing your head back towards the headrest. Right. Because everything we do now, we're always kind of projecting ourselves into what's happening. Absolutely. But we're never coming into ourselves. Right, right. And that's why our parasympathetic system is not really functioning that well. Our vagus nerve, mm -hmm. which is your 10th cranial nerve that like does a whole bunch with your digestion and all that kind of stuff. And people take acid pills and all that. And it's really that you've compromised your system so much. Yeah. It's like a whole big, huge thing of we're a system. Mm -hmm. The whole system has to be addressed in one right. way or another. So, um, and I just read a huge article thanks to one of my friends who's a PT, on neck and shoulder pain, and they really have addressed the thoracic spine. Okay. And opening up the thoracic spine, doing twisting and stuff this like kind of action going mm -hmm. in your head and neck. Yeah. Because it's not in the right place when it's here, so how can it work? I know. I, I know. even even just talking to you, I'm I like, know you're. I'm like, I, I feel I feel how I just want to go like this. Right, <laughs> right. And you know, I fly a lot, and I don't understand why on airplanes their headrest pushes forward. I don't I don't know who they're doing that for. I don't know. I I, I don't. Get I have it. said many times that that people that do the engineering of the interior of a plane should not have a job. <laughs> That's they're terrible. not they're not built for human bodies. No, I don't not. know <laughs> I don't know what they're doing I know. with them every time I get on a plane. I was just flying and I can't remember which airline now, but it actually had an adjustable headrest and and had like something for your head to go back in oh, and wasn't nice. put and I, I don't know if it was Latam out of Peru or British Airways from right. London. Well, it wasn't I did a an lot. American airline. I it can was guarantee not that. An American <laughs> airline. It was not. Right. But it definitely was an international airline, and I thought, oh, thank you, thank you, because somebody actually understands what the body needs to right. be. Right. Right. Yeah. And you're hours and hours on a plane. You oh yeah, and you're not getting up that much. You can try, but it's more difficult on yeah. a plane. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So. Neuromuscular therapy, how did you get into it? Well, I, this is kind of a crazy story. I've done a lot of different stuff in my life, and the last thing I did was for 20 years I worked for a dentist. I think I got laid off because they sold the practice and I was making too much money, which, by the way, was not that much money back then. But, mm -hmm. And I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with myself, and my mother said, oh, I met this wonderful girl, and she's a massage therapist. And this is like 30 some years ago. And I'm like, oh yeah, ma, you know, and I've always been interested in medicine. I grew up in Cleveland and I used to go to all the, anything that was available with the Cleveland Clinic. And in fact, I tried to get into dental school and I didn't have all the right criteria and I was going to go back to school. And then I thought, am I really going to go to dental school? <laughs> we'll see. And so I ended up going to massage school and I graduated when I was 40. And unfortunately, my mom never saw that because she passed away. Oh. And um, I went all through uh, the program. It was like a year long program. And then toward the end of the program, they had a race in Cleveland. Uh, a, um, was it a, I don't know. They had some marathon, I think it was a marathon race with some elite runners. And so they asked the students if they would work at the end of the marathon. And somehow or another, I made my way into the hotel room where the elite runners were. And there were people there doing neuromuscular therapy because these people were requesting that. Okay. And I remember thinking, I am like so tiny and I have such tiny hands. How am I ever going to really do this work? And somebody basically talked me into it. And there was a class not very far the... Neuromuscular classes were like Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
and I took one of the segments of it and I learned more than I did in my whole time in a year of when I took a neuromuscular class. So I just went right through all six of their segments and mm -hmm. I, I got certified as a neuromuscular therapist and I taught, um, I became a teaching assistant for them and all that kind of stuff. So that's how I got into it. And it, yeah. it's like super, <clears throat> super effective work. So it I is, keep yeah. going back to, <laughs> even though it's it's my main thing and I do other things, I just keep on going mm -hmm. back to some of the techniques because they're awesome. Yeah. So, um, tell us about maybe one of one or two of the biggest um, changes or or. I don't know what the right word is. If somebody came in for a treatment, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about how we're talking about how things are a lifestyle and we're not looking for quick fixes all the time. But I know I've seen some big radical changes with just one treatment and I'm sure that you have too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. is there anything you can share? Well, I do a lot of people that have headaches. And so. One of the first things, and I'd like to teach people things they can do for themselves. Okay. Because it's kind of expensive to have therapy every week or twice a week. Twice a week would be really great if you're really in pain. Um, and I teach everybody how to pull their hair and their ears mm. and, like, you know, do some stuff themselves and breathe. Um, and, you know, I always end up, so I've had a lot of people that get immediate relief from there. Mm -hmm. And they go, oh, you know, you taught me how to pull my hair, so I pull my hair in the car all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it really relieves, really, because it may not get rid of a migraine, but it'll really take mm -hmm. it down. Because your fascia on your head gets really tight when mm -hmm. you're about to have a headache. And by being able to release that, you're taking some of the pressure off of your head. Okay. And so those were always great. And I always used to like it when people came in and they were crooked, you know, when their back was yeah. went out and they come in and they're yeah. like that. And yeah. To be able to release all that in like the serratus anterior and the like lats and stuff like that. People think it's their back, but it's mm -hmm. usually they've either been carrying something like this or they've been lifted like that, one or the other. Yeah. And so even making small lifestyle changes like carrying a heavy bag across, which most people do do now. Um, I had a gentleman not very long ago, actually, who worked in the city and um, wore nice loafers and stuff in the city and carried a briefcase. Well, his, he had tennis elbow, his arm was killing him, his hands, he had plantar fasciitis. He's retired now and he doesn't do any of that and so he doesn't have most of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it really makes a huge difference in what you do. Yeah, it does. You know, all the time. You know, I look around and I see a lot of people who, you could work with somebody, they can go to you or to me or to acupuncture, or to physical therapy, and they come back and they go, nothing has worked. Yeah, Well, I've if heard nothing that. has yeah. worked, you want to take a deeper look at why nothing has worked. Right. What's really going on in your system, because we're a whole system. And uh, it's That's like really true. become something that I've become obviously mm -hmm. really passionate about. Yeah. Because I see people all the time that are just not doing all that well and they're not that old yeah but yeah. I think it's an important discussion to have because we're we're so used to uh, again kind of looking outside of ourselves for f things to fix you know mm -hmm. take either take the pill or get the shot or you know go to somebody for a massage and again sometimes those things can be helpful right but what's the underlying cause right. of the pain or discomfort, let's get to that and let's do, that's the real healing work. Right. Right, that's where we have to get. Right, and that's yourself changing things. That's bringing everything that's back to you. That's bringing everything back to you because you are in charge of your own well-being. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be able to get on the floor and play with your grandchildren and pick them up as you get older and... Yeah. You know, have fun and go on a hike with them and right. stuff like that. If you want to do those things and you can picture in your head, mm -hmm. picture in your head, by the way, is really a good way to do those things also because thoughts are things. Right. And But if you want to make the changes that will really allow you to do that stuff, 
you just have to start thinking about it and yeah you can do your own research and see what's out there because not everything works for everybody right you know yeah but like you know and that's why the show this show is about introducing these different things to people so that you can explore them for yourself and right. I think um, what I'm finding is a lot of the discussions that I'm having with people that aren't even about the actual therapy these are really good nuggets of wisdom absolutely absolutely <laughs> because they they make a different I mean if you really you know if you're taking care of yourself you want to kind of do it all and there are so many different therapies out there not just hands-on therapies but red light therapy and hyperbaric mm -hmm. chambers and cold therapy and cold mm -hmm. plunges and it mm -hmm. just goes on and on and yeah. on and some of it you can do yourself and yeah. the biggest change is, is is changing what you eat right because our food is sad yeah the standard American diet that's what they call it the sad diet yeah yeah and I think the biggest thing is to be kind to yourself yeah, that's, that's important. That's whatever it is, you be kind to yourself. And Do you think neuromuscular therapy, does that qualify as a deep tissue or not I, necessarily? I don't like that word. <laughs> I don't either. I think that I think that's, people don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, all. nobody should be digging around in you to make you black and blue, number one. Mm -hmm. Anybody who may, inadvertently, sometimes if you have enough, like, fatty tissue, it's very vascular, and you can accidentally make somebody black and blue. But you shouldn't dig around just to cause pain right. just because you can. Um, but if somebody were to come to um, a therapist specifically for that, mm -hmm. um, maybe a friend recommended it or who, who knows how they came to you. Right. Um, what would be the first thing that you would do? Would you do like a body scan? Yeah. and I'd do a postural assessment and have okay. them fill out a form and right. find out if they've had any accidents because accidents and surgeries and scar tissue are very impactful on your body. Right. Um, and then, you know, we take a look at them, depending on how much time, you know, people are pretty busy. Yeah. They don't really want to spend two and a half hours with you particularly. Right, right. Um, so I'll do a relatively quick assessment and I'll look at their bodies and stuff okay. like that and, and then I'll get them on the table. So for the... For the nature of the show, can mm -hmm. we do a little scan on me sure. and check me out and sure. have you tell me what you see that might need some work or assistance, and then I can also tell you, like, okay, this has happened, that's happened. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Are we
Thank you for that, Terry. Yeah. When uh, when I went to put my glasses on, mm -hmm. I I did a quick thing, and I I went like this, and mm -hmm. I felt a little pop. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, there we are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so before, you know, I could see way further this way, and now I feel like I can see maybe even more Good. Uh, than I can going that way. Yeah, well, that was like five minutes. It was, <laughs> but, you know, it's just like you were very effective. and um, I try to be as precise as I possibly can and get it done. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, because why spend two and a half or three hours and it's interesting, like I mentioned to you, when my atlas uh, <coughs> access, when that whole thing goes out mm -hmm. and I start to get this sinus thing. So that happened two months ago, and then it just kind of would ling it was just lingering and lingering and lingering, turned into a whole sinus infection because I was traveling. And by the time I got home, things were getting a little bit better, so now I'm fine. But sometimes in the morning, I'm still waking up a little congestion-y. Mm -hmm. So now that this is back where it should be, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if I don't get a um, little bit more draining, draining. And, and then a yeah. bigger opening. Yeah. Yep. You so know, sometimes there's just these little tiny little things. Right. It's like, oh, there we go. Something right. just... It's freeing up. Just moved again. But anyway, I feel like, um, yeah, I almost went to the chiropractor, but because of this shoulder injury, I'm very hesitant having somebody do abrupt adjustments on my head. Right. Right, right, right. So this was wonderful. Yeah, I. You don't need to. You know, the chiropractic, which I have had done a lot, a lot of times for Atlas, is like pretty heavy duty adjustment. So I just figured, I actually figured this other thing out more on my own. I just yeah. like will hold it, and because the one thing that I did learn is, generally speaking, your body wants to be where it belongs. We want to be in homeostasis in our body and our endocrine system and our everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And so by just touching it and, like, allowing it to move, a lot of times things just go back the way they belong. And you don't have to use force. Force doesn't work for me. I know some people do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you good. so much. Can You're I so welcome. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Oh, we'll get our microphones all scratchy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. Uh, so if you are interested in looking into neuromuscular therapy, I mean, five minutes, five minutes with this master and um, my atlas is back and I had some little self-adjustments. So if this is something that you want to look into for yourself, I will put those resources at the end. Take a look. See if you can find somebody in your area. At the, at the very least, Google neuromuscular therapy right. and see who's near you. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. That was